What's up, VC? What's up, Vinyl Community? It's Dan hanging out with you, coming at you late on a Monday night. But I got a contest, and I really liked this one, and I want to do this one for his channel. It's for Rod over at Happy Hippie, the Vinyl Guy. I love this guy's energy. He's got a real laid-back style. He's very positive. He's also, he's a former radio guy. So, uh, very cool. What he's doing is he's doing a day, the day the music died contest. And uh, so what he wants you to do is uh, have two or three artists that died that like really shook you up in the core, where you were when you got the news, and then two or three other artists that uh, you may or may not have been a big fan of, but remembered when they died, and you you do remember that the impact that they had on music. So, and also a channel shout out to a channel that needs some more subs. So that's coming up here in a little bit. So uh, I want to get down to business here, trying to make this a quicker video since it is like ten o'clock here on a uh, on a Monday night. Anyway, still going with a coffee too. Maybe I ought to not do that. All right. So uh, anyway, the first one. It's kind of a somber contest, but uh, I think it's I think it's really it's really uh, it's a really good topic. I, I love I love doing contests because the topics are normally very interesting. So the first one is uh, man, when this guy died, it, it did hit me pretty hard. Um, Peter Steele from Typo Negative. And uh, let me let me see, make sure I'm getting in the frame here. Typo Negative. This is the only vinyl that I have by those guys. Um, this is a, a reissue, the music on vinyl press of uh, Bloody Kisses. Peter Steele, I don't know if you guys know a lot about Typo Negative, but this guy was one of a kind. He was probably 6'8", 6'9". Um, there he is hanging out in the in the background here. Um, he's 6'8", six, 6'9", six, weighed a good 280 pounds probably. Not a guy you want to mess with. Had a super deep baritone, just baritone bass voice. Heck of a musician. He was in a uh, in a in a hardcore band called Carnivore, and uh, I want to say it was New York or Jersey. Um, in the uh, in the eighties, and then started Typo Negative, which was more like a, a gothic metal kind of band. Very very cool stuff. Um. Great stuff if you get a chance. You probably heard their song. There's a couple on here. There's one song that's called Christian Woman. There's another song that's called Black Number One. I'm sure you guys probably know that one. But uh, So when Peter Steele died, I was actually playing a video game uh, called World of Warcraft. And um, they have these zeppelins that take you around to, uh, to different parts of the continent or the world or whatever. And a friend of mine, we were chatting... While we were playing uh, on Vent, and he's like, dude, Peter Steele just died, man. And um, I just, I'll never forget it. It was a strange thing, uh, hearing about Peter dying. And, and the thing that bums me out the most is about, I don't know, six or eight months before that, I had a chance to go see them live. And that really, that really sucked that we missed that opportunity. Um, I was always like, yeah, they'll come back, you know. They were always kind of on tour. They were a busy working band, so never did get to see Typo Negative. So, yeah, Peter Steele, I'll never forget that one. Uh, I remember this. I remember when he died. I remember it was George Michael um, and my only George Michael album that I have. I don't even have any Wham, which is kind of weird because I really love Wham. Um need to give me some wham uh so anyway when uh when george died he died on christmas and i didn't know about it on christmas uh but the next day mom called me she's like oh did you hear about george michael she knew i was a fan of george michael and i don't know i was just bummed out i didn't i didn't realize didn't see that one coming so george michael he died at he was like 53 and peter Steele, i believe was 48 when he passed and then this one's probably going to be used a lot, Rod. <laughs> I apologize, and I know you use this in your in your video as well. But it was such a major impact um, when Kurt Cobain passed. He, uh, it was the weirdest thing. 
when I moved, I, I, I grew up in a, in a, in a town right outside of St. Louis called St. Charles, uh, right there on the river. And, um, we, I grew up on MTV. So when we moved, we moved to a small town in the middle of, of Missouri. And they were so like, this was like an uber conservative town. And they actually had like city council vote that MTV was not allowed because it was the devil's music. Uh, <laughs> So it was, I was, I was like, I was in mourning when we moved there. I mean, I was like, no way. I don't know if you guys remember the Lost Boys when he's like, you know what no TV means? No MTV, Mike. I was absolutely, when the, when the cable guy came over and he's, he gives me the list and I'm like going, okay, which channel's MTV? And he's like, there's no MTV. We don't have it. I'm like, what? Yeah. City council of that town voted out MTV. It's crazy stuff. Anyway, so my mom, uh, she still lived in St. Charles. My wife and I went to go visit her, and she had MTV, and we were like, watching MTV. And I want to say Beavis and Butthead was on, and they broke in with the news that Kurt Cobain had died, and that was a major, major impact on music. I mean, it was... I love hair metal. You guys know that. If if anybody here is watching my channel has seen my stuff, I am a hair metal freak, and I know that Nirvana was pretty much responsible. What I think hair metal, I think you know, a lot of the record companies were responsible for hair metal's death because they pushed way too much of it down our throats. But uh, Nirvana was kind of like the killing blow to hair metal. But uh, still, I mean, you can't you can't deny the impact that. Nirvana had on music and many musicians and we if, if not for Nirvana we would have no Foo Fighters guys and I love Nirvana anyway so and uh, just a little information if you guys are ever looking at at purchasing this album uh, this is the 20 20th anniversary it's the dual it's the double vinyl it's got a nice gatefold here and um, yeah it sounds phenomenal and there's a live show on on the other on the other disc there. So yeah, those, those, uh, those guys kind of, those were the real big ones that I remember that hit me pretty hard. And then, um, so I'm just going to go through this. He wanted two or three others that, uh, you know, you might not be a huge fan of, but you remember when they died and they made a huge impact on music. So I'm just going to knock three out in one record right here. And, um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Traveling Wilburys. Uh, Tom Petty, Roy Orbison, and uh, George Harrison. All th uh, Three of the five Traveling Wilburys are gone, unfortunately. This is a great record if you guys ever get a chance to pick this one up. Uh, it's a fantastic stuff. And um, so I'm looking here, and I'm, I'm having to cheat. I got a cheat sheet here, guys. So George Harrison, uh, he died in 2001 in November. And I don't know if you guys remember, there was this little thing that happened late in the year in 2001, 9-11. And I think his death was kind of overshadowed by that. And I knew who he was when, when he died, but I, I wasn't really a huge Beatles fan. I was raised on a lot of Elvis. There's that whole Elvis Beatles thing. But, uh, you know, I, I can't even begin to tell you the impact that George Harrison had on on music. Uh, Roy Orbison, he passed away in uh, 1988. And uh, I remember when he passed because my dad was a huge Roy Orbison fan. And a um, little info, this, this Traveling Woolberries album, this came out in 1988. So... Um, I didn't even I I didn't know that's the year that he died. I do remember him passing. I remember my dad being very upset. My dad always had some Roy Orbison tapes or eight tracks or records or whatever he had uh, when when we were growing up. So it was like Roy Orbison and Lester Flat and Earl Scruggs. <laughs> I, was, I was very familiar with with those guys because uh, my dad. But uh, yeah, I remember Roy Orbison passing. And then last but not least, I mean. Tom Petty passed away just a just a couple of years ago. I remember that happening. I was at work when I got that news. 
and I was working in in a in a shop with a guy, and um, I I remember telling him, my buddy Paul, that Tom Petty had died, and he's just like, man, is it ever going to stop? I mean, it just felt like there were so many deaths that were happening uh, around the time that Tom Petty died. So huge loss to the uh, to the music to the music. Uh, music period in general when uh when all these guys passed they all had their own their own uh impacts of of course especially with Roy Orbison George Harrison Tom Petty I mean these guys I mean I what can you say so uh just uh I don't want to say honorable mentions but uh also uh Dio Ronnie James Dio passed that's been I don't know I I want to say it's been about 10 years probably since since Dio died. I'm not sure. I think I, I might have looked him up a little bit. Yeah, it was in 2010. 2010, Ronnie James Dio died. So, yeah, and um, also recently, and you guys, have, I, you guys have seen this record, and I've talked about him a couple of times, but uh, also uh, Mark Hollis, the uh, singer-songwriter for Talk Talk, he passed away in February of this past year. And that really, that was a, that impacted me. I've always loved talk, talk and it's just like their style. And, you know, highly recommend if you guys are into kind of any kind of the synth pop and that kind of stuff, make sure you check out some talk, talk. So, uh, that's it, uh, for the contest. And, uh, it's time for that channel shout out. So, uh, what he wanted to do is, uh, is give a shout out to a channel that needs some more subs and mine is going to be Brian's Vinyl Records. And uh, you want to check the description, uh, link in the description below. I'll link to his channel. Right now he's sitting at about 32 subs. That needs to go up. He's got a good channel. He puts a lot into it. And um, he's pretty active in the vinyl community. So uh, check out his channel, Brian's Vinyl Records. And, uh, yeah, so... Make sure you check that out. So uh, thanks, Rod, for putting this this cool this cool contest on. And um, you know, it's it's never about what you win. It's it's more about the contest. If, if if you win or lose, that that doesn't matter. It's about getting involved. And I just appreciate you uh, coming out with a cool topic, and appreciate you uh, sending out. I think it's a, it's David Bowie's 1966 album. So is the uh, is the prize. So, and I think you've got two weeks to do it. So, anyway, make sure you check that out. So, I'm going to get out of here, guys. So, you guys just keep digging them records, and uh, we will talk to you later. Peace out. You guys have a good night.